Hello Glamour Ghouls, happy Halloween! If you're new here, my name is Midge Munster and on this channel we do all things campy, kooky, glamorous, and spooky. So if you are like me, you probably spent the better part of November and December watching and re-watching Wednesday. <laughs> and with that, my love of the Addams Family was reignited. I've been re-watching all the old TV show and the movies. And I recently re-watched Addams Family Values, which is my favorite. <laughs> you just can't get better than Joan Cusack in that film. She's so good. But in rewatching that, I got to revisit the iconic Debbie Fester scene where he is wearing this apron. And I thought, I cannot think of a better Halloween project than to recreate Fester's heart-shaped apron. I have always loved that image of him. It's just the juxtaposition of his like gaunt spooky face with this frilly kitschy apron is so funny to me and once again it lives in my sweet spot where spooky and kitschy meet. I have not sewn in quite a while. I used to work in a costume shop and I sewed pretty much every day in college. I picked it back up a few years ago and was sewing quite a bit but I have not uh, sewn in over two years now but I absolutely love sewing. I want to get back into sewing and feature it more on the channel because it's something I really love to do. And I thought this apron would be a really nice simple project to kind of work our way back into the sewing waters. We have quite a bit of work ahead of us so without further ado let's get crafting. So starting out, we're gonna make the bottom portion of the apron. I got this red heart fabric online from Joanne and I think it's a pretty perfect match to Fester's apron. I'm starting by measuring the length that I want the apron to be. I went with 21 inches from my waistline and then folded the fabric in half lengthwise. And that will be the full length of the apron. I believe it's about 46, 45 inches across. So we're just going to cut the selvage edge off the fabric and cut it at the correct length first. And now we have our apron. So for the next part, we're going to cut our waistband. I'm gonna use a contrasting fabric. I've got this red heart print just smaller <laughs> and we're going to measure two five inch strips and cut those out with the fabric folded in half again. This is an extremely simple way to make a gathered apron. It's really nice because it doesn't require a lot of measuring or anything since the fabric right off the bolt is gonna be pretty much the exact width you need for everything we're gonna do here. I cut one of those strips in half so we don't have a seam right down the middle of our waistband. And I'm just going to pin those together on either side and then sew them together. Then once we have them sewn together, I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and just press these seams open so that the seam looks nice and clean from the front. While we're over here at the iron, I'm going to take my apron piece and fold over our hemline at the bottom and iron that flat. Uh, I do about a half inch to an inch hem at the bottom, just depending on what kind of look you like, but I do mine a little bit thicker just because I think it looks a little more, um, I don't know, vintage, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> looks a little more handmade as opposed to machine made. And I'm just going to run that hem through the sewing machine very quickly to finish off the bottom here. Now it's time to gather the apron. So I am putting my sewing machine on the longest stitch setting and not back stitching at all here, just running two parallel threads through the top of the apron. And then we're going to use these basting threads to gather the top. This is a really simple technique uh, if your threads are 
loose enough, you're just going to start pulling and scrunching the top of the apron until it's pleated uh, to about half the length. So like I said, I believe this is about 46 inches in total uh, before the pleats. So once this is half that width, about 22, 21 inches, uh, that will be when it's ready to attach the waistband. So once you're ready to attach the waistband, just find the middle point of the apron and the waistband and pin those together with the uh, right side to the wrong side, if that <laughs> makes any sense. Right side of the waistband to wrong side of the apron. And you're going to pin the ruffles right to the top of the waistband. Uh, this looks maybe a little strange right now, but I promise you this is going to help us uh, in the long run here finish off this waistband very easily. You're also at this point going to pin your right sides together of your waistband. And then we're going to take this over to the machine and sew the straps of the waistband together. You're going to sew from the edges almost all the way up to the apron, leaving about a one and a half inch gap open right before you get to where the waistband connects to the apron itself. That way we're able to take a turning stick. Here I'm using a straw. <laughs> you can use anything, end of a spoon or uh, you know, a dowel rod, anything you have that's long will work to turn these inside out. Uh, but you're just going to push the fabric all the way through to the other side and turn your straps right side out and they'll have a nice finished edge. But as you can see here, the part of the waistband that is over the apron is still open. So that's what we want it to look like. Then we're going to take this over to the iron and press our straps flat and fold the waistband with the seam allowance under so that we cover the top of the apron there, hiding those pleats that we made with the basting threads. Go ahead and press this just to make it nice and easy for yourself to work with here. And then we'll just take this back to the machine and run it through all the way across so that we seal up that hole above the apron. And that's all there is to it. This is a pretty simple pattern, a pretty easy way to make a little gathered half apron. So let's take a look at what this finished product looks like. Okay, the bottom half is done. <laughs> I am so excited um like i said at the top of this video i have not sewn in two years and this was so easy and it's so cute so that is that part done um we are going to take a break for the evening and then tomorrow i'm going to start the heart bib portion <laughs> unfortunately uh, that is i think going to be the most challenging part so even though i feel really good and confident about this uh, this was the easy part, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to clean up a little bit and I will see you tomorrow. Good morning. Welcome to day two. So I am really excited and really nervous. <laughs> the first part of this was something I felt confident that I knew how to achieve. This second half, uh, we're kind of going in without a paddle and just like trying to fake it till we make it, I think. So I have this solid red fabric. This is what we're gonna make the heart bib out of. I'm also going to try to make some cording for the like outside of the heart out of the remainder of this small heart print fabric. If you recall when I bought all this lace for the Ouija board project and then didn't use all of it and I said I would use it in future projects, welcome to future projects. I want to try to use some of this lace trim for the ruffle around the heart rather than eyelet lace. I just think this is gonna look nicer. And in looking at the screen caps from the movie, it looks like his is like lace. I've seen a lot of recreations where they use eyelet lace fabric, but his looks more like, what is this? <laughs> scritchy <laughs> looks more scritchy it doesn't look like a soft cotton it looks like it it's more of this type of material 
And then finally, I have some quilt batting that we're going to put between the layers of the heart to give it some heft. And then we're going to do the quilted heart lines like in the film. Again, I've seen uh, several recreations of this like for sale and no one seems to ever do the the quilting lines in the heart, which I think are really pretty and like are one of the best details of the apron. So I'm going to do them or try to. So it, you know, it doesn't seem like we have a lot to do today when I say it out loud. It's a lot of like small, tedious stuff. Mm. So, but first we need to cut out our heart and uh, make it to the size that we want it to be. I think for that, I'm just going to measure from the highest point I want it to hit to where I want it to attach. Yes, I am wearing the apron, that is why, because we want the point to attach a little below the waistline. Um, so I'm gonna measure from like here to here and see what that is. And then we're gonna draft out our heart and cut it out. I'm talking and stalling because I'm nervous and I don't wanna start because if I mess it up, there's no going back. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. So as I mentioned, I started by measuring from the top of where the heart would be to where I wanted it to attach to the waistline of the apron. Uh, it looks like that was about 16 inches. And then I measured across my chest as well to make sure that the heart was going to be wide enough um, and took half that measurement. I think it was 24 across. So uh, we marked here 12 across so that when we unfold the heart, it will be 24 inches across. I was doing this without a pattern and just kind of drafting this as I went. So it was a little bit of trial and error. I cut this out and the heart was a little bit wide. So I did end up trimming it a couple of times until I got it the exact size that I wanted. So here we have our finished heart piece. I'm really happy with how that came out. Uh, now it's time to make the piping. And I mentioned I was going to do this out of the small heart fabric, but I did not have enough to make a bias tape, which is what we need to do here. So instead I'm going to use the remnants of my large heart fabric from the apron. Now, if you've never made a bias tape, it looks a little weird and complicated, but it's actually quite simple. You just fold the fabric in half diagonally so that the selvage is touching and uh, this makes the fabric stretchy extra stretchy uh, the this diagonal across the the bias here has a lot of give to it so when you make this bias tape it goes around curves and things very nicely because it has a lot of extra stretch so i'm just making a about an uh, inch and a half strip here and then we're going to encase this cording in the bias tape to make a piping. Once we've got that all pinned, I'm just running it through the machine with my needle set so it's right next to that piping cord, uh, getting a nice tight stitch line there. And then we just trimmed the bias tape a little bit and we're pinning that to the edge of the heart. Uh, again, because this is done on the bias, it's very easy to work around the curves of this heart. We're pinning the outside edge of the bias to the outside edge of the heart so that we can finish this in a way where we'll turn the heart inside out basically and the piping will make a nice finished edge on the outside. While I still had the white thread in my machine, I wanted to go ahead and make the straps for the top of the apron. So I took the remaining fabric of this small heart print and just folded a couple of straps out of that and ran that through my machine. Day three and hopefully the last day. I think we are almost at the end of the tunnel. I was really hoping that I would finish this yesterday, um, but time just didn't allow for that. I had evening stuff going on and this piping um, turned out really well, but took a lot longer than I, I wanted it to. Uh, I will say making the actual piping, I was really excited that I did that and remembered how to do that. It's been years since I've made a trim or a bias tape or anything like that. So overall, I think that went really well. Um, we've got our finished bib piece with the piping on it here. Um, this is already sewn and attached. And we made our 
over the shoulder straps yesterday. Uh, we've got the apron here. So we have all the pieces now officially. Everything's kind of starting to come together. What we have left to do today is I have this lace trim that I'm going to run around the edge of this. Oh my god. <laughs> it's going to be so cute. Okay, so we're going to gather this. This is four yards. So I should be able to gather it down to about two yards, which is how much cording we had. So that should go all the way around the heart. So we need to do that. Then we need to cut our batting into the correct shape and then basically just assemble everything. We need to put the heart together, turn it inside out, fill it with the batting, and then attach the straps and the apron, do the quilting on the heart. It sounds like a lot, and it kind of is, <laughs> but it's a lot of like little things. After the pleating of the lace, um, everything else is pretty small, simple stuff. It's gonna go really quick. It's just a lot of small things. But for the moment, I'm going to go pleat all of this <laughs> and then I'll come back and we'll start assembling and hopefully we will finish this apron today. Okay, so first things first, we got to talk about the hair. Um, Y'all, I got a $10 fake ponytail on Amazon. Are you kidding me? Look how cute. My hair, not my hair. The color match is insane. It's so cute. It's gonna work for so many of my 60s styles. I'm just like so excited about it. I'll link it down below. We'll do like a, we'll do a video tutorial of how to do some styles with this. But anyway, back to the apron. So I've got all my lace pleated. We're gonna go ahead and sew this together so we can get the pins out of it. Sew it uh, flat so the pleats stay in. And then I'm going to go and attach it to this. And then we should be getting pretty close <laughs> to being done with this. We are almost there. So this is the heart all finished. Let me move this. <laughs> Stinking cute does it look? I'm so happy. I, I'm just so excited that I'm sewing again and then it's going so well. Okay, so this is what this looks like. Now all we have left to do is take this other half of the heart. We're going to fold all this stuff back into the innards, flip it back around. Probably need to like pin the lace down um, inside for the time being until we get this done. But I'm going to put this on top of this, sew around and leave like a little opening to flip it inside out. Then all that, all this trim and stuff like the, the, seam allowance oh my goodness my brain the seam allowance should all flip inside leaving everything nice and finished looking on the outside run it through the machine i need to change to red thread but we'll make our little quilted lines sew through that and then it's just hand sewing i think i'll hand sew to attach the straps and put the heart to the apron and then we'll be done Okay, so I'm gonna finish up these last couple of details. I'm gonna throw you into a time lapse so you can follow along and then I will see you in the reveal. <laughs> so I took this piece of heart that was not attached to anything and used that to just cut the batting down to the correct size so that I made sure it would fit the shape of the inside of the heart. And once I had those set aside, I began pinning this lace down to the inside just so we can attach these two pieces without catching any of our lace pleats in our machine. 
Then I took the other half of the heart, laid it on top, and pinned the seam allowance together. Uh, again, much like we did with the straps of the apron, leaving a hole at the bottom to turn this around once we're finished sewing. This was a little tedious. It was definitely uh, thick going through my machine with all of the lace and the piping. So uh, if you're doing this, just take your time and make sure everything is lining up and going through nicely. Check your needle often and make sure everything is connecting the way it should. Now it was time to turn it out. So uh, I was very excited, very nervous. This is one of the more complex things I've done with my sewing machine in quite some time. So I was hoping that I had done everything right and that it looked good. Once I got it turned out and saw how it looked, I got really excited and then I got really emotional for a second because I was so proud that I had made something so cool. Uh, I was so ecstatic. This looks so just nicely finished and really, really precious. Next, I just took the batting and stuffed it in that open spot at the bottom of the heart. And then this was honestly one of the more complex parts was just wiggling around in there and trying to flatten the batting out and get it into all the crevices of the curves. But once I had it how I liked it and it was all puffy and adorable, I took this back to my sewing machine once more and did the quilting lines around the edge and closed up the bottom of the heart. And with all of these last little details finished, it is time to take a look at the reveal. Hey, if you're ever wondering what a child would look like between Uncle Fester and the woman from Mars Attacks. <laughs> Ta-da! Well, I am so freaking thrilled with how this came out. I think it is so, so cute. Like, if I wasn't, you know wearing this makeup. I think this is just a very cute little apron and I think it would be uh, a really cute little like Valentine's Day kind of pinup photo shoot too. Just the nature of the style of this apron has very like 50s vibes to it so I love that it has a little vintage flair but it's still in the spooky family thanks to our boy Fester. <laughs> Overall I mean y'all saw when I got emotional <laughs> earlier. This is the First thing I've made on my sewing machine in give or take two years and I'm just so happy that like it turned out so well and it was fun and I really really enjoyed making it. I've missed sewing a lot <laughs> and this just like reconfirmed to me that this is something I know how to do. I think I, I suffer a lot with thinking like oh if I'm not you know a professional costumer then I don't know how to sew or that I'm like not good enough at sewing to do it on like a, a, a platform like this but I'm I'm really really proud of this I think it's just so fun but that is all for today thank you all so much for watching I really hope that you enjoyed this video happy valentine's day happy valloween I hope you have a really lovely holiday as always if you're not already be sure to subscribe to the channel before you leave today we would love to have you as a part of our glamour ghoul gang and if you'd like to see more content from me you can find links for my instagram and patreon in the description box below thank you all so much for watching I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and until next time Keep it campy, kooky, glamorous, and spooky. Bye. <laughs>